Hi everyone, it's Ren here. Welcome to my room. I hope you're well today, guys. Today we're going to have a little bit of fun and try to um, arrange a list of the INFJ's five favorite types. So I hope you're excited about this prospect. Also, let me point out that unlike a lot of my lists, this one will actually be ordered from number five to four to three to two to one. So there will be an official favorite type of the INFJ selected by yours truly. Now, before I move on, just remind you that I want to remind you that I have written a book on the INFJ type called The Ecstatic Soul. Uh, it's the most in-depth investigation of the INFJ ever conducted. I'm getting really good reviews for it. It's less than $10 ebook or paperback format, all available in the description box below all the countries. Amazon is there to help you. I help you, you help me. So consider having a look at it if you want to deepen your knowledge. Now, so let's proceed straight to our topic, shall we? I'll begin with um, an honorable mention, a um, mention of a type that is not included in this top five, but uh, could have been, I guess, holding um, the fifth position with the type that is actually in the fifth position. I could have done that, but then it would have been like the six favorite types of the INFJ it doesn't sound as good. So I decided to give an honorary uh, mention, honorable mention to this, uh, to this type. And this type is the ENFJ type. Now, in many ways, the ENFJ is the closest cousin of the um, INFJ, but um, I could not include it in the top five because I think that the other five types that I've included in my top five uh, are types that are a little bit more likely to get on uh, with the ENFJ than uh, with the INFJ than uh, the ENFJ is. The ENFJ has everything that's needed to get on well with the INFJ. Uh, there is one particular aspect that um, I thought was could constitute a bit of an obstacle. So positive aspects, they share all the same functions. So that's obviously a very strong, um, you know, very strong feature to have uh, from the perspective of get, getting on with another type. And also in the same order, except, you know, not, not exactly starting from the same function. But the energies are very extroverted types most of the time. So what I would say is that for this minority of the NFJ types that are maybe type 9 ENFJs and are a little bit less super or, uh, extroverted, super oriented toward people, like that subtype of ENFJ would definitely be in the top five. But for most of the ENFJs that I have come across or encountered, what I would say is their extroversion is also directed. It tends to direct the mood. It tends to seek to impose harmony rather than adapt to the harmony. And that's something that any introverts, regardless of, um, of what specific type of introvert is going to experience at times as either a little bit bossy or just a little bit like it's crossing a boundary. So it could be a little bit of a source of stress over time. So I would say that that's the strong emphasis of the ENFJ toward extroversion. The ENFJs are possibly the most extroverted of all extroverts is what could be a bit of an obstacle to their getting on really well with an INFJ over many iterations of, of, of meeting up. Just one encounter, you know, could extremely impress the INFJ you know, um, about the ENFJ, but a, a lot, over a long stretch of time, I think that some discrepancies will appear. Now, number five, we're officially making it into the list. Well, for number five, I decided to include the NTP. I made a video about uh, INFJs and ENTPs recently, so you can check that. I'll insert the link below. I think that ENTPs are dominant intuitives. Any users complete the INFJs and I very well. They also have FE uh, in a tertiary position. So if it's relatively mature, they can, get, they can get on really quite well. And the TI also can, you know, the tertiary TI of the INFJ can find the auxiliary TI of the ENTP quite exciting to play around with. You know, this playfulness of the ENTP is kind of the playfulness that the INFJ uh, is always looking for, uh, although they don't dare to be as naturally playful. So it's they like to be pulled into that mode, if you like. So all these are great aspects for, for a great relationship. The negative, um, I suppose, there are two. The extroversion of the ENTP, again, could end up being a little bit much for the INFJ. They can get burnt out after a while. So that's the first aspect, even though ENTPs are typically not quite as extroverted as ENFJs. Other aspect is if the INFJ happens to have 
but but not particularly developed tertiary TR. Just have to very to be very very FE uh, oriented rather than TI oriented. And if the ENTP on the other hand is very TI oriented, there could be a little bit of a mismatch in the sense that uh, the ENTP could appear uh, as a little bit cold, and the INFJ could appear to the ENTP as a little bit uh, too sensitive or too emotional, uh, something like that. So now to move to uh, type number four, I had difficulty placing this one as number four. I was very tempted to put it at number three, but all things considered, I had decided to put INTJ, INTJ as number as number four. The reason for um, INTJ being in this list is should absolutely be obvious. The INFJ and the INTJ get on well insofar as they have a very similar kind of worldview as being both NI dominant. So they, it's like they get along almost naturally. They understand each other naturally. They don't even really need to explain their body language almost communicate with each other without effort. So that's all the really positive aspects of, uh, of an INTJ INFJ relationship. I think that, again, the, if the INTJ has very developed TE and FI, that could come into conflict a little bit with the INFJ's FETI because the INFJ is gonna to try to harmonize and pull apart arguments whereas uh, the INTJ tends to seek autonomy, to be suspicious of attempts at uh, um, enforcing harmony. Uh, and at the same time, they don't necessarily like types that pull apart arguments. They prefer types that build things that can work in the world. That's more TE than TI. So I think that with these two aspects, there can also be a little bit of a potential for friction. And it's also a, a potential that I've seen online manifested. So despite this amazing potential, there are a few obstacles that sort of force me to put the INTJ at number four and not higher. Number three, I've decided to put the INTP. So the INTP is a little bit higher than the INTJ. I think one reason is that yes, the INTP is even more of a T user than the INTJ because they're actually T dominant, but they're TI dominant and FE inferior. So allow the FE of the INTP to be relatively developed as far as an inferior function can be developed. And that's that's the source for great um, great friendship and a very mutually enhancing kind of friendship um, and interaction because the TI of the INTP is very attractive to the INFJ's tertiary TI. I, I refer to this in a video on the INTP, which I also link below as the attraction of the tertiary TI user for the, the dominant TI user, or the, in general, the attraction of the tertiary user for the dominant user. Because the, 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 the function that it's in the third position is always predicated upon growth. Often a type never feels like they're growing more than when they are consciously or not developing their, their tertiary function. So being exposed to the dominant is very productive from that perspective. And again, there's, a T, there's an FE, there's potential for FE um, alignments as well. Interestingly, the FE of the INTP has, has I've picked up, and I think that's partly because it collaborates with NE, so you wouldn't see that as much in an ISTP. It's the, the FE of the INTP is very playful, is almost childlike. It has that kind of tendency to be silly just for the sake of it and to not take itself too seriously. And I think that's something that the INFJ craves. But because FE is higher in the stack, if they're not in the presence of someone who's a bit like that, they'll be hesitant to embrace that part of themselves, even though deep down they would like to. So that can be very liberating to be with an INTP. And then all the advantages of, of, of any that I talked about in relation to the ENTP are there for the INTP as well. So it's a, it's a great match. And number two, I've decided to include the ENFP. Um, I don't know if this requires uh, a lot of justification. It just seems that the INFJ ENFP relationship is extremely um, is extremely well recognized to be a bit of a golden pair. There's magic when each type each each type meet. Um, there is an attraction that just happens there. Something that goes way beyond just the notion of the cognitive functions. I could try to give an account of it in terms of the cognitive functions, and I will for a moment. But let's just also uh, just sit down, reflect for a moment, and realize that. Two people could be INFJ and ENFP, neither one could know this, they might not know this at all, and they get on remarkably well in real life, and they might never know their types. That often happens between INFJ types and the NFP types, um, and I think that that has to do with the 
and again, the interaction between any e and NI that you see in INFG and TP relationships, but for some reason, um, and this is a bit of a mystery to me, but the, the INFG seems to get on better with the ENFP. So it could be partly because they're both feeling types. So there's not a risk of being obsessed by a certain hardness of the ENTP and the ENFP. And because the FI of the ENFP is uh, kind of in, in good collaboration with TE, it gives the ENFP at times, weirdly, that could be the impact of any as well. Something that doesn't, it's not FE, obviously it's not FE at all, but it can also, it, it can make the FI of the NFP a little bit more like projected toward the other than the FI and FI DOM. And that means that, that getting on with someone who's an, an FI user, for an FE user is something that's quite possible within the NFP because of the FIT combination, especially when they're well-developed. And again, it's just how it works. So I don't think I need to argue this further. And finally, my number one, it could be a bit of a surprising decision, but I also want to challenge your own views and preconceptions. Uh, I've, I've decided to put the INFP as number one um, favorite type and best companion, best match for the uh, INFJ. So why did I pick the INFP? Well, I made a video on IN or why INFJs love INFPs recently, so I'll link that one again in the in the description box below. Um, Again, it's 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 a it's a kind of chemistry that can hardly be explained by the functions, and that's what I love about this uh, relationship so much is that it seems to be so strong and so immediate and so spontaneous, and so viscerally there that it doesn't really matter if you fail to give an account of it in terms of the cognitive functions because again, both types have nothing in common function wise. Uh, INFPs are FI dominance, so which it means that they, a lot of them can come across as a little bit reserved, almost a little bit stoic and cold at first sight. They don't open up easily, and at times they can even get suspicious of the INFJ's tendency to spread FI everywhere as, as soon as they're a little bit comfortable. Uh, INFPs tend to think a lot about uh, things that happened to them, to, they tend to ponder about the past quite a bit, which is linked to the FI, uh, SI function, SI in con conjunction with FI and also any. Um, and their sense of humor is not quite the same as the as the humor of the INFJ. Uh, I think that the sense of humor of the ENFP is very idiosyncratic and not as transgressive, whereas uh, the sense of humor of the INFJ is a bit less idiosyncratic, but more transgressive. Nevertheless, I think that in terms of the potential for growth on both sides, that's the highest potential. And ultimately, I think it is because both types aspire to be, although they may not admit it to themselves, what the other is and what they are not at that particular moment. So the INFP, the INFP, I'm sorry, is is always aiming to make their original idiosyncratic personality and existence more in tune with the world and to project it toward the world. It's not something that's easy easy to do for them because they're again, FI dominant, quite introverted and suspicious of spreading their creativity around. So they tend to want to keep hold of their own creativity, but because that's not growth, growth is to actually get out of your comfort zone. They, 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 they treasure the idea of being able to do this from an introverted perspective. And they see INFJs via FI being able to do this. And that's something that they find very stimulating. And that, again, is a key to growth. And on the other hand, the INFJ can do this, but INFJs, what they doubt is not so much their ability to, to, to project themselves toward others with ideas, because they're better able to do it than INFPs, but they're more likely to doubt their originality, their uniqueness, or to feel a bit bad, not, not being able to deal with the fact that they have this singularity, because it conflicts with their desire for harmony. At, at least that's how per they perceive it. But again, the idea of getting out of your comfort zone is to, to go into those areas. And the INFP is like that by nature. And so by being exposed to an, an INFP, that can be a great source of inspiration for the INFJ to take the bull by the horns and face their singularity. So the INFP confers the singularity of the INFJ. The INFJ confers the ability to project themselves toward other people uh, to the INFP. Bring both together. It's a potent, magnificent blend. And so that's all for my list. Um, so just to give you a quick recap, number five, ENTP, number four, INTJ, number three, IN, INTP, number two, ENFP, and number one, INFP. I would love to know what your own top five is. So let me know in the comments. Consider giving me a like and subscribing. And I will talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.